So what I need is what I call a home team. We need a home team of traditionalists who also understand the Kurukshetra, the intellectual Kurukshetra, who understand what is going on, who is who, how they are playing this game, what is their strategy, and who to work with, who to be careful of. Now, one of the major improvements today compared to 10 years ago is a huge scale of Indian participation which was not there at that time. In fact, the organizers had very difficult time to motivate and get Indians interested. And I was, my foundation, even though a small foundation was approached to come, at, to come and be one of the sponsors, uh, one of the two, we and the uh, Thai people together did this because the Indian government didn't want to. But today I'm very happy that the Indian government has, got, has opened the gates and is sponsoring Sanskrit and funding Sanskrit and we are people like Krishna Shastriji and Kutum Shastriji and others who are uh, really understanding this and helping it spread. But when you open the floodgates, all kinds of people get in. You also have to be careful because when word gets around Indian government got money, Indian government got positions in Sanskrit, everybody's got the motivation to get in. Good people, bad people, whatever people, everybody want to get in. Because who would like to avoid the opportunity to make extra money and of course prestige and plus it's a very good strategy to smuggle in and infiltrate. So this idea of the insiders having a home team doing this Purva Paksha and Uttar Paksha on the others is very important, more important than it ever was. I also find uh, the reason I got my project reactivated a year ago this project of studying insiders, outsiders of Sanskrit, which I started 10 years ago. You know, I had put it on the shelf and I was working on other things. A year ago, I suddenly woke up because something very strange happened. Some friends who are wealthy in the uh, New York, New Jersey area where I live, called me and said that they are going to uh, create Shingeri Mutt Pitams, Shingeri Mutt branches in U.S. universities. And this is very good because Adi Shankara will become very famous now. All the Americans will be teaching him. I, my antennas went up. I wanted to know who will be in charge. What kind of teaching will they do? Whose lens will, lens will they use, insiders or outsiders? And sure enough, they had appointed a person on whose work my whole book is now uh, based. A person who is sort of the head the most important person in the American Orientalism view, whose own view and his students' view is that Purva Mimamsa was something very abusive, socially abusive and toxic and the project that he's on is to detoxify, to get rid of those kind of ideas from Sanskrit and whose own their ideas are that Adi Shankara comes and his Uttar Mimam's response makes it even worse. So I took this and I said to the uh, uh, Shankaracharya, I met the Shankaracharya himself in Shringeri. I talked to the people who are funding this chair in the US. I talked to the uh, US based uh, people in charge of Shringeri Mutt. And I said, this, these are the people, this is their ideology, this is the work they've done. These are the people who you will turn over the keys. You're outsourcing the legacy of R.D. Shankara to these people. You should do your due diligence. You should do your Purva Paksh. After that, you accept it. After you know what they are like, you can accept it. But don't do it because of their prestige, because of newspaper articles, because of very, uh, very sophisticated speeches. Don't do it for that reason. You need, your tradition requires you to do scholarship. And Adi Shankara went around and did real serious scholarship against his opponents and debated with them. It was not based on PR and appearances. And it's not a question of that they are nice guys. The only answer I got back was, oh, but they're very nice guys. We meet them, they're very pleasant. They talk to us nicely. But I said that is part of the aestheticization of power. The very same thesis they have built to explain how Sanskrit spread, that same process they are using to spread their own ideology. It's called the aestheticization of power, meaning you spread your power in a very aesthetically nice way, you're nice guys. So I found that our traditional scholars, the, the people who are funding it, some of them are very large industrialists, some of them are government related, media related, all sorts of people who are funding these kinds of projects were completely ignorant in, beyond the surface level 
of what was being presented. Newton, if it is proven that Newton was a badmash, he was a scoundrel, then you know aeroplane will not start falling down because gravitation is gone. The nature of reality is independent of how somebody is understanding it.